It was a glorious day for the launch of the new extension to the Coleridge Way that takes this walking route through to Linton and Lynmouth. The route is named after the 18th century poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and some of his descendants were there to mark the event. Now the party's over and the full length of the walk has been opened, so let's see what we can find on the Coleridge Way. There's 51 miles of path to walk, from the Quantock Hills of Somerset in the east at Nether Stowey, through the Brendan Hills and Moorland of Exmoor National Park to the North Devon coast. The route reaches its official western endpoint at the Pavilion in Lynmouth, but you can follow an optional extension to Poet's Corner in the Valley of Rocks. The Romantic movement began to open the public's consciousness up to the value of nature. At the eastern end of the route, you'll find Coleridge's cottage, where he lived from 1797 for a period of three years. His most productive period, where he created works that were celebrated, including The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, Frost at Midnight, and The Nightingale and Christabel. He would set out from the cottage and walk across the Quantocks and Exmoor with William and Dorothy Wordsworth, composing poetry as they walked. The Coleridge Way links two protected landscapes, the Quantocks in the east, and in the west, you pass through Exmoor National Park. Each has its own stunning scenery and breathtaking views. The Coleridge Way is an ideal choice if you've never tried long distance walks before. You can take a leisurely week to complete the route. There are plenty of B&Bs ready with a warm welcome to choose from along the way or you can select sections to walk one at a time. The whole route is marked by the Quill logo. Look out for these signposts and they'll guide you on your way. The walk takes you through an ever-changing landscape of open moorland, ancient woodland, historic villages and dramatic coastline with scenery and stunning views that change as you reach each new section. So let's visit some of the places on the Coleridge Way. This is Nether Stowey in the foothills of the Quantocks, a recognised area of outstanding natural beauty and the place where you'll find the cottage where Coleridge lived. How did you find the walk? Uh, it's a beautiful walk, it takes you across the Quantocks, um, which is the area of outstanding natural beauty, and then out into the Brendons and across Exmoor. And personally, I think it's some of the best scenery in the country. Fantastic. And as a B&B owner, you must see all sorts either start their walk here or uh, many are starting to walk the other way from Lynmouth to Neverstowey. Um, what's the reaction when they come through the doors? I think people are looking for a challenge. Um, you know, it's just, uh, several days staying in different places, looking at beautiful scenery um, and getting some exercise as well. So it's, it's definitely a challenge and, and when they get to the end they can pick up a certificate in the um, Tourist Information Centre. When you get to the high points along the Kelleridge Way there are some fantastic views. As we came out of Monk Silver up Birds Hill, uh, just seeing the view from the viewpoint up there, absolutely fantastic across the Bristol Channel, over to Wales, um, but just the views into Exmoor and then of course looking back into the Quantocks because that's something we don't see very often. So we spent um, seven days in total because we walked um, all the way to uh, Lynmouth and then looped back as well. We've arrived at Bick Nolla, one of the many small picturesque villages that lie on the slopes of the Quantocks. St George's Church still contains features built in the 12th century and is dominated by a 1,000 year old tree. This really is a view that could inspire anyone. Along the route, there are various activities connected to the route, such as geocaches and these story boxes, where you can add your thoughts to the story as you go along. Wedham Cross sits almost at the midpoint of the Coleridge Way. It's the highest village on Exmoor and sits a small distance away from the scenic Snowdrop Valley. 
I think now the Coleridge Way is a bit longer, it um, opens up a lot more possibilities for people to either do the, the whole walk in one go or perhaps do it over two separate weekends. So it's, you know, it's a really nice flexible route if you like. We've sometimes had groups of friends walking the Coleridge Way together who've stayed with us for the full number of nights that they've been doing the walk and they'll use a service like the Moor Rover to transfer them to and from their start and finish point. And we have had people at most times of the year. You know, some people really enjoy winter walking and again, the countryside's beautiful in all seasons. This is where you can experience the openness of Exmoor at its highest point. The Coleridge Way skirts around Dunkery Beacon and this is where the walking route and Bridal Way part company. The footpath continues to the north, while the Bridal Way turns to the south until it reaches Exford. Across Exmoor you can find purebred Exmoor ponies and the largest herd of wild deer in England. Along the whole route there is a wealth of wildlife and plants to look out for. Call in to sign the Coleridge Way logbook and pick up some tips on what to see around the picturesque scenery of Porlock Bay. Yeah, Por Porlock is a fabulous place, not only for staying for one night, but also as a destination place for, for stopping off for maybe resting your feet for a day or two. There's, there's so many activities in the area. Um, the, the Coleridge Way links in with other paths as well, but if you like walking and just want a brief break, there are so many walks in the area. We can walk down to Porlock Weir, which is only about a mile away. Uh, we can walk down to the beach, which is only 15 minutes away, or walk up on the moors and have, um, have a lovely day out. There are a myriad of paths around here that people come from all over the world to enjoy. Or takes its name from the Or Valley in which it sits. The most notable feature of the village is St Mary's, where the fictional character of Lorna Doon was shot by her half-brother Carver while she stood at the altar to marry John Ridd in R.D. Blackmore's novel. This is where the last leg of the journey begins in the valley of East Lynn, which will take you down to the coast. The valley here is shallow and broad, but that is about to change. The course of the River Lynn quickly deepens into a dramatic gorge with swift rivers flowing between steep valley sides and rocky outcrops softened by ancient woodland. At Watersmeet you'll find some history too, with the old hunting and fishing lodge. I'm here in Watersmeet with Ruth Luckhurst and you're a travel writer and you've actually produced a very detailed guide of the Coleridge Way. So tell us first about Watersmeet, where we're standing right now. This was a fishing lodge. It was built by the Reverend Halliday of nearby Glenthorne, very much a romantic poet's aficionado. He loved the romantic landscape and all the rest of it. He built this as his fishing lodge and he's put a quote from William Wordsworth over the door. You'll see it as you go in. What are your favourite spots? Oh, all of it really. <laughs> uh, my high spots were very much the high spots. It goes over a series of hills and it's a bit of a toil uphill many times but when you get to the top you can look back, you can see the series of hills that you've already climbed, you can see the landscape between them, all the different sorts of landscapes and you can kind of immerse yourself in the landscape by looking back, seeing where you've walked during the last day or two just thinking back through the experiences you had there. It all sounds a bit corny, but this is what the Romantic Poets were about. I would say it's one of the easiest long distance walking routes. My very first one, I took a backpack out in the far northwest of Scotland, and it was very hard. If I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done the Coleridge Way first. I've managed to stop a couple of walkers who I believe are walking part of the Coleridge Way today, is that right? That's right. That's great, yes. yes. Yeah, we started off in Lynmouth okay. and we're going to try and work our way up the valley um, as far as we can get. Actually, we've done this walk before, this, this section, and I think this is one of our favourite favourite parts, this little bit from here up to Watersmeet and just beyond there. At different times of the year it's different. So at certain times of the year it can be quite gloomy and moody and you get that sort of feel, that sort of 
I suppose it's romantic, slightly depressed feel to the, to the area. And then other times you'll come out and it's, it's bright sunshine and it, it feels very uplifting, very, you know, joyous. So that has a, a different feel to it and, and um, you can see how they were inspired to write. Lynmouth, the pavilion, the very end of our journey now. The pavilion marks the end of the Coleridge Way, where you can pop in and claim your certificate to mark your achievement. You've just completed the 51 miles of the Coleridge Way. How did you find it? Enjoyable walk with stunning views. And favourite spots, I mean those views are amazing throughout the route, but there must be a couple of special moments for you. There, there are, coming round the Quantocks, uh, open moorland, views up the Bristol Channel, beautiful. And the uh, second one is coming round Dunkery Hill there and looking out across where you've actually walked. You can look back and see the scenery. Everything you need to get started is on the Coleridge Way website at coleridgeway.co.uk. There's plenty of information to help you plan your walks and where to stay, places to eat, and guides to public transport. There's lots of background information about the area too to make the most of your journey. I've walked the Coleridge Way in the footsteps of the romantic poets. Now you can too.